Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. I am your host, the one and only Harrison. Yes, 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 back again. Appreciate y'all for joining us again. Appreciate everybody that checked out the last episode featuring Chubby Sensei. Make sure y'all go ahead and get the album Shadow Boxing if you already haven't. But what's good everybody i'm still trying to figure out which day i want to go ahead and do these recordings on but doesn't mean the content isn't still getting recorded so i appreciate everybody hanging with us i'll say this now and then i'm gonna say it again when it happens we're at 19k um had to figure out and maneuver some things had to drop an episode from off of youtube but it's still on there the diddy episode but i just want to appreciate everybody for rocking with me and uh everybody that checked out and did send me texts about the chubby sensei album um it was the first interview so you know what made it kind of the reason for reaching out, especially, you know, since the show's format is unchanged, is just kind of like, you know, you want to always keep your skills honed and you don't want to make sure you lose it because you, you know, when you do an interview, you haven't done it so long, setting up guest times and everything, topics. If you haven't done it, you know, you can come off a little rusty. And then also when you're talking just by yourself, you can, um, you, you know, you can get used to not having anybody interjecting what you got to say or running on topic running on the questions too long so it was good to kind of keep that muscle still you know worked out so uh thanks chubby sensei for coming on like i said make sure y'all check out shadow boxing you can download on all major streaming platforms that you know provide music so let's go and kick it to the show uh man um like I said, one of the best things about not putting everything out immediately if something happens is because you can kind of let things go about. And what we're going to talk about at the top of this show is Caitlin Clark. I mean, let's go ahead and just give the attention to the WNBA like they want it. So we've all seen kind of the the national spotlight that the WNBA has gotten. And I want to sit there and say that this spotlight has not only come because of Caitlin Clark, it has also become because of angel reese and i do want that to be known that when you're talking about the wnba's current popularity or increase in popularity that angel reese does get her credit for the collegiate battle that happened between the two of them in the ncaa women's championship i remember that when this was going on that i was in houston watching the lsu versus iowa game where angel reese won and beat kaylin clark so I watched them last year. I watched them uh, the year that they won. And I'll say this before I get into it. Well, actually, I'll wait. I watch. I was already kind of, I was watching women's basketball already, WNBA, um, especially because I have a niece and she's really into basketball. So, you know, you want to make sure that you are being positive because you want to make sure that you are supporting the game not the gender or, you know, not kind of making a mockery like uh, WNBA is a side act like the Harlem Globetrotters. So I have been keeping up with them for a while. The Aces, I remember when Candace Parker went to the sky, won a championship her first year. Um, you got the Sparks. You got you got just got a bunch of teams uh, in there. I can't remember. I can't remember her name. But she was drafted by the Fever. I always called her like a female Derrick Henry because she liked Derrick Henry with the uh, – if, if Derrick Henry was a woman, she played for South Carolina Gamecocks. But um, I say this to say that that class from the Iowa two years ago is a class – Iowa versus LSU, that, that draft class is – they brought their fans from college basketball to the WNBA. So – Without the Angel Reese and the Kaitlyn Clark rivalry, you probably wouldn't have had a lot of eyes in the WNBA. So she does get her credit. Now, with that being said, Angel Reese is not going to be the box office draw. It's just, it's just not. At the end of the day, her cockiness will not be celebrated. Her, her 
flair, her arrogance, her competitiveness, it will always be looked at as negative. It will always be looked at as something that you would tie a racial tone to. It will always be something that at the end of the day, white people will not put their money into. So, yes, she is a reason that people came to the WNBA from watching her in college. But as far as the big dollars and things like that, she was not going to move the needle just on her alone. Now, the support that she's going to get from celebrities, yes, that's fine. The rappers, celebrities, all these people, they're going to come to the Sky Game because of her, because she is a very um, energetic, she is a very good player, but she does not do anything exciting as far as from a standpoint of what people at the position she plays already does. I'll give you an example for a counterpart in the NBA. What makes Wimby different from maybe a Chet Holgram is that Wimby is like seven feet tall, sham guarding people, shooting threes, pulling up as a point guard, lanky, defending people. You have literally this 2K, my part created rec player, handling the ball at this ridiculous height, killing people. And then you have a Chet Holmgren who's tall and can do some of the same things as well. But he, there are other tall people in the league. So Chet is not going to bring eyes. That's why everybody pays attention to Shea Gilders Alexander. But Wimby is on the Spurs who ain't doing nothing. But you'll watch all Wimby game because what are you going to see next? Nobody at his size should be able to break people down like Kyrie. And so if you're seven feet tall and you're a big man, how do you stay in front of somebody like that that's pulling up from three that can literally catch the ball and dunk it from the free throw line? How do you stop that? Who's tall enough to stop somebody with that type of athleticism, speed and ball handling? is generational so that is what i mean by there are a bunch of angel reese's in the league right now uh you got well liz cambridge when she was there you got um the girl from the sparks i can't think of her name right now but um Aaliyah boston you have uh and it's only because i'm recording i can't get the name right it's a bunch of players that play down low in the power four position like um like uh, even the girl from the Sparks, a rookie, she plays just like Angel Reese. She could pass, so she's a very good, um, she's a very good player. But that's not going to bring eyes. Dunking used to be what brought eyes to the NBA, and then that little light skinned man from the Warriors, Steph Curry, learned to chuck it up from three. That's what Caitlin Clark does. She has a transitional game that lets people think that anybody can do that. And anybody, what I mean by that is white kids, white girls, whatever, that may not get as big or do not have that athletic ability to do Euro steps, 360 spins, just have the the twitch that you see a lot of African-American men and women have that they stick to fundamentals. And then you have Caitlin Clark sticking to fundamentals, pulling up from three-pointers. That's where you put your money at. That's where white people are going to put their dollars at. When it comes to Kalen Clark and for a lot of people that don't know, the league has always been physical for the WNBA. But um, right now, what they're getting to is you bring all these people that want to see their favorite college player, Kalen Clark, come in and y'all are whooping her ass. And um, I want to share some clips on it right now. So check out these clips real quick of you know people's input on the whole caitlin clark situation and drama that's been unfolding you women out there y'all petty man the wnba is playing this all wrong it's supposed to be like wwe y'all used to be supposed to play hard against her but y'all supposed to let her kill first of all what did you expect was going to happen to her number one i don't think it's jealousy oh my god she's getting all the endorsements we're going to go after her you're playing at the highest level you're playing in the wnba why are people so shocked? Y'all petty girls. Y'all should be thinking that girl for getting y'all ass private charters. All the money and visibility she bring into the WNBA. For folks that are just joining the WNBA and following women's sports, it's unfair to the women of this league, to your point, who have laid the groundwork for Kaitlyn Clark to come in and now take it to the next level. You're supposed to compete. But I believe you can do it without being cheap. If she start having bad games and it don't look like it's supposed to look like what we just seen from college and how we so excited about her coming to the league and changing it. And she don't kill like that. It's going to like bring it back down to reality. Like, uh. I mean, throughout the season, she's been getting beat up. My issue, where the fuck are her teammates at? Pick her up. Like y'all supposed to protect the asset, protect the star. 
this rookie class, this rookie class, this rookie class. Nah, there's one white bitch for the Indiana team who is a superstar. Look, y'all have charter flights, all this stuff that they want and need, more money, all this, new teams getting added, all this. When she come, you got to protect that at all costs. All right. One of the most memorable ones I've seen out there was a Jeff Teague one. And he said, you know, that you got to treat it kind of like the WWE. You know, Caitlin Clark is your box office hit right now. So you want to protect the star. And by doing that, I think that the league needs to kind of, he said, I, the league, you know, let her shoot up a bunch of threes, let her shoot, uh, you know, uncontested, score up all these points because you're bringing eyes to the game. And I feel like this is like the back and forth that you're getting from people. I mean, you see at one point in the, on the, um, the highlights of her, if you've seen it, people will shoot free throws and forget they have a second free throw to guard her. You guard her 94 feet. And everybody remembers Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball was getting crazy treatment when he first got there because of the stuff that his dad was doing. But at that point, Lonzo Ball was – there was a LeBron James only. There was a Kevin Durant. There was a Steph Curry. There was a Giannis. There were people already that were faces of the league to where – you are. We already had the attention on the league. So versus Angel Reese, I'm sorry, Caitlin Clark, the highest them two girls are going to make in a five year career for their contracts is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's nothing for your star. So that means all this work that y'all have been doing has been not producing enough to get y'all the lucrative contracts that y'all to have so earned i think it's only three women signed to signature shoes one of them is sabrina from the liberty and i can't think of the other two people's name i want to say asia wilson i think she, i know she signed with nike i think she has a signature shoe coming but if she doesn't uh she deserves one two time mvp back-to-back w nba women's champion um the best player in the w but you know this whole notion of is well let's say this first Kaylin clark though brought the eyes that y'all needed to see that like y'all flying spirit or greyhound or just un conditions that are just below the standard for a professional athlete and she's getting people charter jets she's getting the eyes i think i seen one stat that angel reese packed uh i want to say it was the uh, mystics washington mystics the the arena was like ten thousand. okay and then Kaylin Clark plays them. The arena is at 20,000. So they're coming to see her. Whatever people want to say, yes, that's fine. She is y'all's draw. And, you know, my issue kind of with it is, is that, yes, there's been uh, fights. I remember Candace Parker when she fought the Detroit Shock and Cheryl Suits like messed her knee up. Uh, it's been plenty of petty stuff that happens through it, but it's so it's been aggressive, is what I'm saying. Some of the stuff y'all doing is unnecessary and it's not form of competition. Old girl from the Sparks, I want to say Chandler, whatever her name is that I'm not the Sparks, the um, Sky when she ran down on her and hit her because they were yapping. That's not a basketball play. And if y'all beat her up or mess her confidence up or do whatever, then what is it going to do for the sport? And I feel like this is the argument that people keep having. We're not talking about the WNBA not having competitive people, great basketball players. That's good. Like it is, it is fun, but it's like the big three league. Ain't nobody watching that over the big, over the summer, except real people, real basketball enthusiasts, people that are watching the WNBA are real basketball enthusiasts. So we know about the Maya Moores. We know about the Skylar Diggins. We know about the Dana Taurasi's. We know about the Asia Wilson's. We know about the, um, the, uh, Asia, Aaliyah Boston's or the Aiko. I can't get her name right, but we know those people are balling, but you can't say these names to half of the casual fans. Um, and I've seen like this discourse, you know, like, Guys say this all the time. Dudes have carried the viewership and, you know, the attention of the WNBA, but it can only go for so long. This has the most attention to the WNBA that is had in a long time, but it's for the drama. Uh, Angel Reese got pulled down a game or so 
before the Kalen Clark incident, and ain't nobody talking about that. And I seen one report say that it could be black on black, but at the end of the day, the play that Angel got pulled down was a, a box out. Old girl is running through and shoulder checking her. And one of the issues that it has is other than the physicality, where are her teammates at? But, you know, I heard somebody say that when you're not really making that much, can you take that kind of fine? Hell, yeah, you could take that kind of fine because this is your box office. And you hear this from Hoopers. You see this um, old girl that plays in WNBA that's on Countdown, the NBA, the NBA Countdown on ESPN. You know, like I said, if you're an NBA or basketball enthusiast, you can name five WNBA players. But if you're a casual female that watches the WNBA, can you name five females that play in the WNBA? Can you name five teams in the WNBA? No, but you can name all the housewives. You can name all the the um, uh, the people from Love and Hip Hop. You can name all the bad girls, baddies, and all this because it's dramatic. Right now, it has most of the people's team because you have a racial storyline to it. You're not watching it for the competitiveness right now because if you were watching it, you would know Caitlin Clark, all this attention. She's still on the worst team in the league. And they were the worst team in the league for a reason. Indiana Fever had the number one pick for a reason. They may get the number one pick and get Paige. But it's the fact that what people are trying to argue to the WNBA is we know y'all been having great people play for y'all. Nobody was watching it. So when y'all get it, y'all are trying to fight the fight of what well, ain't about Caitlin Clark, but it is because you need these casual fans to watch and stay aboard for their favorite player. Casual fans are what's being brought to by now. Like all these girls want to be Caitlin Clark. She looks like a normal girl. She looks like something regular girls can aspire to be when you want to sit there and say what impact is. And then also I say this about Marvel all the time. You know, some people don't get like what made in game so crazy. Or if you talk about post in game movies, if anybody sits there and says like, Oh, Marvel Endgame, Infinity War, it's the best movie ever. Marvel, like, especially when they talk about movies post Endgame. All the movies before leading up to Endgame were not all like stellar, top movie ever, anything like that. What made those movies good is how Endgame brought it together. And when you could sit there and see the journey that you had to go through, the first Thor was terrible, in my opinion. The second Thor was good, but um, I was never on the train that Iron Man, the first Iron Man, was. Uh, iconic my favorite is this iron man 2 um then you have ant-man it can go both ways the first one uh you have black panther if y'all being honest y'all didn't come for the comic book feature of it you came because it was black and it was niggas fuck because i remember how y'all was coming to the movies in dashikis i say all this to say that you know when you sit there and you complain about something like certain things brought casual people Two in game was one of the biggest movie openings in the world. It's Marvel's, it's Marvel's bet it all on black. And then when you see stuff post, you forget what it was like before that you made it to what it was. WNBA, I say the same thing. Y'all had potential and great, you know, great value to a certain extent, but you didn't get the eyes that you wanted. So now that you have the eyes that you want, what are you doing with the product? You want to sit there and say, well, she ain't it. She ain't that. She ain't this. Cool. Use Caitlin Clark to boost your profile up when you play her. Who is this one girl to play Caitlin Clark? She did her dirty. Boom, boom, boom. Now more eyes are on this team from the Sparks or this team from Atlanta or this team from Phoenix. Y'all use that to the advantage, not knock the motherfucker out. So where the only thing that you could talk about is a dirty ass play. I feel that what's being lost upon it is you have people speaking on the WNBA and what it has been or what it could be or what you should do that have already been into the game. You're not talking to the casual people that don't care about the WNBA. I said this a long time ago. I said, I feel like people from the WNBA heard that like, ain't nobody trying to go out there looking at a bunch of lady rages or people coming through looking like future young thug when they're walking through the tunnel for interests. Ever since people have been dolled up, the Kelsey Plums, like I said, the the Asia Wilsons, the Tia Coopers, 
Candace, you have um shoot uh, Angel Reese, you have uh the girl that went ahead of her in the draft. You have so many people since it's been more dolled up, it brings more eyes. Like, oh, who is this WNBA player? Oh, who is this? Who is that? Like, it, it's is it does something when you tone down some of the masculine energy that you put the cameras on because ain't no ain't nobody trying to watch a bunch of manly people that aren't dunking in the game of sports that you can just go watch the NBA for. So they did that marketing standpoint. You put people in there. You see a lot of females now in the WNBA wearing makeup and stuff like that. And then you also have the aspect of, you know, a bunch of people in WNBA dating each other. Like when you want eyes in it, you have to kind of think about the product that it is. Like if dudes was dating dudes in the NFL as white right whatever how much they want to lump that christian shit they ain't gonna watch that shit like colin kaepernick lost his job because he wanted the police to stop bashing black people and then the nfl took a dip in ratings because it got too political so like nobody's gonna watch a game to where it has a loving hip-hop storyline to where you know uh Oh man, five, four, three, two, one. The lovers quarrel, but should I block her? But that's the love of my life. Or you know, like it's just it's it's just dr- dramatic. Like it's not sports. It's not. It's just too, doing too much, and people don't take that into account. And then let's also take into account the big elephant in the room. A lot of reason why you know you don't see women and all this type of stuff. Pay attention to it because WNBA players don't make shit. <laughs> I mean, shit. If you want to deal with a WNBA player, I mean, shit, you might as well deal with somebody, a regular teacher, a uh, motherfucker working as a manager at Verizon, a janitor, uh, somebody who uh, drives the bus. Like, that's how much they make in a year. So there's no real value in dating a celebrity. Um, guys probably wouldn't give a fuck, but there's no real uh, monetary value in the WNBA. As many of them do date women. Um, you see how many of them, I, I bet you this, if you ask a, uh, a woman, how many NFL or W or NBA players they can name, they can name a bunch. You see them all sitting courtside, but you don't see the same in women for the WNBA because they ain't making no money. If they was flashy, if they was doing this, there was some real value. Niggas would be wanting to get flew out too. you be seeing them sitting courtside. Like, come on, I'm gonna go bag me a WNBA chick. So like, there's no money in it. There's nothing to promote. But like, let's just stop with the whole narrative that y'all keep talking to casual basketball. Y'all keep talking to basketball extremists on what's happening and basket and just mainly the women talking to the guys about it. But you need to talk to the casual fans who already aren't watching your game. And let's go to the Olympics right now. You know, um, Caitlin Clark has left off of the u.s women's team and uh you know i know the roster is pretty stacked who would you replace her with but also at the same time let's keep it from a one let's keep it from a standpoint of you trying to grow the league ain't nobody gonna beat y'all regardless so the girl can play yes who would you replace her by but also at the same time do you want your game to grow having her on there i get it but and I see people say she's gonna be good, the keys will be in her hand. How do you know how extreme that this year has been on her? Why don't you put her and Angel Reese in the USA Olympic Games? You're going to turn eyes. Like I feel like what's the most confu the most frustrating about this is that when you ask for help and you get the help, it's gotta be help the way that you want it. And the WNBA wants help the way that they want it. Now that you got the eyes on you, the attention, you don't like that it's given to a regular heterosexual, brown hair, tall, skinny, frail, straight um, woman that's out there getting the attention of the white man's dollar. You could put this white girl anywhere. White people will feel comfortable, safe. They ain't got to worry about nothing. They ain't got to worry about no political issue. Her. They can sit there and feed it almost on like a bullshit Republican Trump type narrative to where you can lie to yourself and say that it's not this. It's not that what they really mean is X, Y, and Z. I mean, it's a ploy. It's whatever. But instead of sitting over there and making it seem like you're not jealous, like this is one issue I have with Angel Reese. We're not watching it. We're also watching it because of me too. Angel, we are watching the game because of you. 
but we they aren't paying they aren't going to pay the game because of you because they didn't do the shit for Maya Moore they didn't do the shit for Candace Parker they didn't do the shit for uh uh Aaliyah Wilson but you see Kelsey Plum more than you see a I'm sorry Asia Wilson but they you see Kelsey Plum more than you see Asia Wilson they didn't do this for Lexi Brown they didn't do this for Tia Cooper they didn't do this for Lisa Leslie they didn't do this for Cheryl Miller 100 point scoring ass they didn't do this for Brittany Griner we talked about Brittany Griner more for her selling uh, uh getting caught with drugs and we talked about her game like they not gonna do it for black women so you know exactly what they're doing it for. They're not even doing it for Dana Taurasi like that because, or Sue Bird, and that's because there is the factor of, yes, they're talented. Yes, they white. So one of them is, but they also don't want to get political if they want to say it with, when you, when you support somebody like that, you have to go with the rights of the LGBTQ community. And, as quiet as it kept white people ain't all on board with that type of bullshit so uh and when i say bullshit i don't mean the lgbtq uh plus community is bullshit the bullshit that they mean is that they have to go put their dollars in something that they don't believe in and they gotta watch their mouth to where they don't have to get caught on some type of donald sterling secret recording saying something that's inappropriate for them or they gotta push a bunch of stuff that they don't want to sell that they can just be out the way with. So if you got a Caitlin Clark, you ain't got to play, you ain't got to do no type of what Paige Bunt, uh, when Paige Bunker did, like, you know, talking about black women, you ain't got to push no women's this, you ain't got to do that. Caitlin just go out there and play. That's what they want. State farm ass type of girl, go out there, do her job, go home, ain't on social media. The traditional white prototype It's like the Steve Rogers of white women's basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what they want. And that's what y'all not getting. And until y'all get the fact that white people is going to pay for what white people want, then we'll we'll get past that. But you're not wrong in it. You're not sitting there saying, yes, it may suck, but use her to your benefit and don't use her to your envy. Because look at the eyes that you see. Angel Reese is taking those same hits. Candace Parker has been a scrap. Dana Taurasi got into it with somebody and she kissed her. Skylar Diggins, which I kept her off of black when she cold as fuck. Skylar Diggins and Dana Taurasi got into it. The league has not been soft. It's just <clears throat> now that you have more eyes on you, make it about the game. Dog her ass like the Liberty did. Look at Sabrina. Sabrina, another one they promote. Sabrina came to the W from to the NBA and had a three-point contest with Steph Curry. Why is that? Why ain't nobody else done that? Come on, be real. She got a signature shoot over Asia Wilson, over a bunch of, over Candace Parker. Candace Parker was dunking. Like, like, let's be real. So use the stuff to your advantage and don't be upset when it comes to it. Don't be visibly upset and frustrated and voice it like, well, why not me either? Nobody wants to hear that. Um, You know, I cut, touched a bunch of topics in there. I just think I said, I think also we got to really admit that if the WNBA wants to grow and I'll end it here, this topic women you have to support the WNBA you have to support something that isn't drama field you have to sit there and give the same energy that you give to love and hip-hop to real house wives to bad girls club to anything drama and problematic to anything that got chaos or anything bickering and fighting you have to get that to the WNBA if you see stuff with guys like I said we are still watching there's a competitive nature you have to be the forefront of the program that you want to succeed. You can't let these male platforms talk about your program and get it to the light that you want it and then be upset when you're not getting it spoken to the way that you want it to. Matt, Pat McAfee sitting there praising her up and calling her this white bitch. But in a way, kind gesture, a woman wouldn't have did that because she knows the what's his state you know she just knows the proper way that somebody another woman will want to be talked to you need your joy taylors what she is doing on uh, speak for yourself your taylor rooks you need like those platforms and inside the nba does a good job of it um monica mcnutt on first take and um i cannot remember her name on the inside nba canvas parker like i said it's a bunch of women in there cheryl swoops on gilbert arenas lexi brown on gilbert arenas podcast they out there y'all have to support y'all program if y'all wanted to survive if not don't be upset when men take the narrative from y'all and continue it to go so um that's what i have to say on that one um 
Saw Bad Boys this weekend. It was great. Thank you uh, for fixing the wrongs of Bad Boys 3 because that was some hot-ass garbage. Um, they could have did without that one. But I will say this one was a good way to book in the franchise for the two of them. I will say what made this one good was because I felt like with this one, it felt like they were doing a movie that would match the age of where they at, like mentally, physically, um, realistically. You know, you can't just be like John Wick. I'm going to tell you what made John Wick the last two kind of unrealistic, especially the fourth one. It's his stairs in John Wick 4. He had to get up in three minutes. John Wick can throw people off of two-story buildings and they fall and break their neck. John Wick busts up his back and leg on a car and get knocked down 175 stairs. Remember, I said he had to be up there in three minutes. Somehow fight off 2,000 people get knocked down the stairs again and make it up there before the deadline. Um, that's what I felt like bad boys three was. It was just a little bit unrealistic for all these, for all y'all to be doing all this shit to where y'all don't have no superpowers. So with this one, I felt like it was a good way to bring everybody back. Everybody was subtle. It wasn't too many cameos from everybody in old movies, but I also felt like it was a little bit realistic. Uh, Mike dealing with the age that he is now, he's no longer at that superhero phase where things don't bother him or he suppresses, you know, maybe all the killings that he did, or maybe just the way that he lived himself. He starts to kind of deal with things to where that, uh, no fear complex kind of dies down. And then Martin, Stop being so scared and kind of being appreciative of it. But also the story kind of flowed well. I thought they probably could have did without a villain because the main one really wasn't too much into it. But it fit well with what was going on. And I mean, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Um, nowhere touches Bad Boys 2. Bad Boys 2 is in like my top five movies of all time. But I think um it's still real good. It, it was a hundred million dollar budget. It was it's over uh it's over um what is it it superseded the projections for and overachieved everything i set for it had a hundred million dollar budget so far it's making like 104 million and also i want to say get his praise to um will smith uh a lot was said from when he had the smacking of um chris rock and a lot of people you know of course when you're on the internet people act like so what happens in like a month or so is going to be your your legacy for the rest of your life but he had a minor setback and he is the the epitome of what you say he is the poster child of a minor setback to a major comeback and this press run between him and martin for bad boys just show why will smith has always been an icon will smith will continue to be an icon and um just seeing the the love that never lost it makes you kind of look at this internet shit and tell yourself like why are there people that give it gas you know why is it that we can't come on here and use the internet for what it is just like make believe um but and then also you look at will smith's numbers now mind you will smith got a big list of l's uh that burn whatever stuff where he was with like a, a mutant uh the one where him and his son was like uh after earth pursuit of happiness seven pounds hancock uh richard if i'm being honest all that shit was ass gas like i could have done without that will smith was going on a heavy decline i liked him in suicide squad but i liked him in the director's cut i felt like him and denzel got this way of just being will smith and then, you know, you look at those box office numbers. This is going to be number nine, but I think Will Smith has own, like eight straight hundred million, five hundred million dollar box office numbers for anything he's put out. So it's not going to be achieved by he's a box office superstar. His impact is felt all around. And I think at the end of the day, people forget that he was human. I think, you know, a lot of things maybe I'm not going to speak on that red talk tape red table talk shit other than the fact that it seemed like it could have between him just letting more into his life and then between all the stuff that was surrounded you know people have people moments and i think you know uh people saw that like oh, okay it ain't rosy being will smith all the time but he makes the most out of it but his drive and his passion never stop i never watched that slave bullshit i'm not gonna watch it but you know watching him 
in Bad Boys 2 makes you still love Will Smith, the person and, you know, the hero that he's uh, been to so many people. Um, Concussion will never forgive you for. I'll say this. I don't know what about a bone density scanner would have me sleeping in the bathroom with my child holding the door and having my hair look the way they did in pursuit of happiness. But that movie would have did traumatic effects to me and me and my father wouldn't have spoke after we did that bullshit because ain't no way in hell that you would have me depicted sleeping on the floor, fake sleeping on the floor for a bone density machine. So in concussion, down to the truth, like he just went on a spree of like fake voices. I like focus with him and Margaret Roby. But uh, I guess that's what got him in trouble. And I thought I liked what was the one where he I guess he had like two hymns. Like, can't remember what it was. Where It was like him and it was like a clone of him. I liked it the first time I saw it. The second time, I guess it wasn't all that, but it was OK. That was probably the, like the like the the most recent one that I could sit there and say, like, oh, OK, that's a Will Smith. Movie. I, I, I guess I could probably watch that one again. That's about it. I can think of at this moment, but. Motherfucker went down hills. He was just Will, like, from back in the day. I already hate the show Fresh Prince. Can't nobody tell me it differently. You're not going to make it to comedy. Name it Fresh Prince. Give all the characters the same. And they say, but it's a comedy. It's a different show. Then name it a different fucking show. Um, Bad Boys 2. I think y'all should see it. I think it's a great movie. It's a box office. It's a summer. Like, let's get the fuck back outside. You know, I think that's what uh, that's what it was all about. So, um, Yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to add that. Um, so I want to, we'll end it with this one. We was talking about, I was talking about this at work. Um, I don't know what it is about when you hit 30 or 30 plus, And I feel like your inner puss starts to kick in, your inner soft side starts to kick in. But whenever I hit 30, um, my need to like tear up or cry at movies just started to like go through the fucking roof. So we were just having a conversation at work. And so, you know, um, at what age did you feel like that you could not watch TV shows or watch movies without like tearing up? You ask yourself, what the fuck? Like, um, I kind of noticed anything with like father issues, father, son issues usually get to me. Um, kind of speak for itself i guess and then if it's like any type of family whatever setting it kind of gets to me as well um so i want to do my top five list of uh five moments in tv that uh moments that made me tear up or cry so uh you know um it's no order uh angela bassett and black panther 2 that whole perform that whole movie was kind of like if you're watching, it can kind of get you a little misty eye. But that one performance, especially when her and Okoye were arguing, and this is the one where she should have won the Grammy for, and she had to fire her from the Dormilogy for losing Shuri. And she sat there and said, please, I have nothing. And then she says, "Uh, um, I'm the most powerful woman in the world, and my whole family's gone. Have I not sacrificed everything? And that whole scene build up uh man it had me tearing up at the theater i don't not know why at that time when black panther was coming through i'd been through like a lot of deaths so like the morning movie in general made black panther to a very emotional movie to watch because the way to handle grief even when angela bassett died in black panther and the way her and mbaku was that was hard to deal with you know, just kind of watching and figure out how people process that because there's similarities in how you do stuff. Um, let's see. John Q. When he was talking about uh, that heart with his son, um, I don't know what it was. I think when I saw it, I had like Zay at the time. So, I mean, I still have Zay. But, you know, seeing that and seeing what you do for your child, you don't want him to die. Or like a very father son type um atmosphere from that um i ain't gonna lie to you uh that got me uh arrow i recently rewatching arrow and that really what made me think of this whole topic uh it's two specific times when um or it's really any specific time when oliver talks to quentin and they go through their whole father son monologue because oliver was dating 
Quentin's ex, I mean, Quentin's daughter, she ended up dying, but they, so it went from like a hate, hateful relationship to more like a, I do stuff because you were always a good father type stuff. And so wanting to prove yourself to one or the other, are you seeing somebody in the father son relationship or somebody kind of has that effect to you where you want to impress them? Um, that always got to me. And when Roy died and where he faked his death in Arrow, that got to me. Um, Spider Man. And Iron Man's death. Let me see which one am I at. That's three. So this is four. Spider Man, Iron Man's death, and um, and Avengers Endgame. Uh, because when you watch Avengers and Infinity War, when you watch Avengers, you knew something was gonna happen. And when you watch it and you see like him snapping everybody, and then you see the Spider Man, he goes, "Mr. Stark, I'm sorry, Mr. Stark." I just didn't want, you know, to happen. And you, you sitting there thinking like, oh my God, these niggas lost. Like, like you sat there and see, and, and you see these niggas is dying. And then like in game, I mean, infinity war ends. Motherfuckers turn to dust. At that point, I have never seen a movie to that, that type of, um, cinematic death to that, you know, to that pole to where like i'm like you you're invested if you've watched all the marvel movies. you're invested in these characters so like yeah you can see certain people die but there's always a build-up if you ever watch a show and somebody says like yeah when we get back we're gonna do this we're gonna do that oh yeah um man i can't wait to get back in life you know whenever they say what's about to happen next they about to die so you you already kind of know they always had the tales but like spider-man going and then in game and the end game didn't hold no punch i mean everybody was dying between the two i mean gamora died scarlet uh black scarlet witch died not scarlet witch um black widow died but when robert downey jr died because they don't get this wrong captain america's bitch ass should have died you you let you let bucky kill um iron man's pops and then you sat there and said nothing but you was trying to be all justified but also at the same time you got to remember, if you've watched all the movies up until Endgame, Iron Man that started was an egotistical, narcissistic, a loner, all these things to see what he became by Endgame. He, especially Civil War, he falls into like one of your favorite characters. And so when he snapped it and then you realize, oh, this nigga's dead. Like it should have been it should have been Captain America. I thought I knew one of them was going to die, but I thought it was going to be Captain America um because like i said even from the infinity war you see like thor upset about what happened that was kind of like sad it was a bunch of sad moments in there but um you see like iron man go and you just realize like right then like iron man is meant should be your favorite character because of what he's done from start to finish is literally like he started the marvel cinematic universe and you see it go and you like these motherfuckers really they wrote in game like they was not writing another movie and the way that they killed his ass off fuck no no was not ready for that it almost makes the the movie bittersweet and so yeah iron man spider-man y'all are there for that one the number one which should be obvious is uh fresh prince of bel-air when he's saying uh why he don't love me uh I don't think I started crying to that till I was probably like 27. I don't know why, but I watching that whole scene and going through the motions of like seeing how it leads up daddy. Oh, and then he ends it with Lou. And then he's like, no, nah, it's all cool. You know, see, seeing the transition from that. And what also kind of kills it is like when you see the behind the scenes and I guess you hear like how many times he messed up the scene. And after he did it, he said, uncle Phil was like, uh that's how you act you don't really want to hear that just like don't tell me what led up to it but you know you see uh um no it's all cool i'm not a little boy asking mommy when daddy's come around he's like i'm gonna have a he's like uh i'm gonna have a better wife i'm gonna have me a gang of honeys i mean a bunch of kids and i ain't never had to worry about loving my kids and then he goes why he don't love me man i do not know what that is my mama cries that slave ass shit color purple all the time for the same scene with Celie, and i don't get it but whatever it is about that um that scene in fresh prince of when he when he has that part with his dad um yeah it gets it every time you ain't no real motherfucker if you can sit there like clean face without watching our feeling some type of way like they acted they ass off almost to the point 
to why I look at if I ever see him in the, the streets, a person who played Will's father, I look at him and call him just a piece of shit. You knew you didn't have to go on that truck ride for the summer. Why you ain't spending with Will? You know what I mean? So it it just lets you know, like, you know, as you get older, you know, what you kind of value and what you kind of see things as. And it's just kind of funny, like, you know, you watch TV and you watch in certain shows and next thing you know, like, dang, who turned the sprinklers on in here? So I just want to end with that. I thought it was funny. You know, if y'all got some top five moments of what y'all find or what's your top five uh shows movies that get you teary-eyed um let me know let it know in the comments let it know in the, under this video let it know on the ig page email let me know at what moment did you start crying or doing anything at your favorite films uh we will wrap it up here i do not have anything going on as far as to promote other than the fact that i want you guys to keep showing your support to the show we are almost at 20k i appreciate everybody that's been rocking with me and patience and everybody that's just been supportive people that are coming back i will try to do maybe get back i'm not gonna say the interview phase or get back to it because i don't want to sit up there and overdo or set the expectation or bar or anything like that but we will keep people in the loop that want to come back on so if you do want to come back on the show be a guest be an interview i'm not gonna say the interview port per se but if you want to be a guest on the show and shoot the shit with me whatever topic i got send me an email at the eight more than 92 podcast at gmail.com or 8mt underscore 92 uh podcast srig or you can hit me up or follow right under the send an email from all the links under the youtube page but also make sure y'all keep uh like sharing and subscribing listen to us on all type of platforms and we will holler at y'all me for the other hand holler at y'all later peace yo 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 welcome back to another episode of the eight morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 you heard none of them sound effects did you nah. hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Okay. It's the 8 morning 92 podcast. You know how we do. We always keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.